Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, welcome, Principal Sir and uh, Obijit Babu, Prabhupada Babu. Chota baje, amdar ministry of late kore main program ta start kore dibo. Uh, Ami shukri Babu ke request korbo at two minute uh, pore uh, recording ta start kore dibo chhe. Ah, chhega. Mudhita ji, good evening. Good evening. Kamuna Cho. Hello, Achi. Aapni kamuna chen. Hello, Achi. Principal sir. Good evening. Principal sir, shubh de bale. Good evening, Madhuri Dadi. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Amar ta pane. On kore niya ki sound system ta. Oh, Achi. আচ্ছা <laughs> 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 
আমার কথাগুলো একটু ইকোড হচ্ছে ফলে আমি অন্যদের কথা শুনতে পাব না আমি দেখছি আমার ছেলের হেল্প শিক করছি আমি নিজে তো এত ইকিউপ নই আমাকে এখন অন্য হেল্প শিক করতে হবে মনে হচ্ছে সবাই ওই সাউন্ডটা অফ করলে ইকোটা কমে যাবে আর এর তাপলিং হচ্ছে একদিন বাদে পুরনো মুখ গুলো দেখে ভালো লাগছে আমার অনেকদিন একসাথে কাজ করেছি আর এখন তো করোনার জন্য দেখা সাক্ষাৎ হয় না যাতায়াত হয় না আচ্ছা স্যার এবং ম্যাডামের পারমিশন নিয়ে তাহলে আমরা স্টার্ট করছি গুড ইভিনিং এভরিওয়ান আই এম সোমাদিত্য দে ডক্টর সোমাদিত্য দে ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ জুলজি বারাসত গভর্নমেন্ট কলেজ আই ওয়েলকাম ইউ অল অন বিহাফ অফ আওয়ার ডিপার্টমেন্ট অ্যান্ড our college uh, we will observe uh, the neglected tropical diseases day though uh, the day is actually 30th january but we are celebrating uh, or observe this day today uh, i would like to uh, request dr sumana saha our uh, head of the department ma'am uh, to say few words uh, on this event good evening and new year greetings to everyone It is a moment of extreme pleasure to welcome the guests who are present here to attend this webinar. On behalf of the institution as well as postgraduate department of zoology, I offer my regards to our principal sir Dr. Shomur Chattopadhyay, TC secretary Dr. Arun Roy, IQAC coordinator Dr. Obhijit De, all the senior teachers, faculty members, my colleagues, friends and my beloved UG and PG students joining us. 30th January 2022 is the third annual world ntd day ntd is a group of infections that are most common among marginalized communities in the developing regions of africa asia and americas they are caused by a variety of pathogens such as viruses bacteria protozoa and parasitic worms some examples include snake bite envenomation scabies yaws trachoma leishmaniasis and chagas disease these diseases generally receive less funding for research and treatment than maladies like tuberculosis hiv aids and malaria entities affect more than a billion people globally and according uh, according to uh, who they are preventable and treatable however these diseases and their intri- uh, intricate re- interrelationships with poverty and ecological systems continue to cause devastating health social and economic consequences world ntd day is an awareness day for addressing neglected tropical diseases the day provides an opportunity to focus on the millions of people who have limited or no access to prevention treatment and care services the first world ntd day was on january 30 2020 aim is to effectively eliminate all ntds by 2030 this year marks the launch of the who ntd road map 2021 2030 which outlines a strategic framework for 149 countries to chart out a way forward in building a world without ntds on this auspicious occasion this year faculties of department of zoology barashat government college wish to celebrate the day by storytelling competition and encourage their ug and pg students to share their stories and experiences through posters graphical artworks drawings solo talks group discussions about entities on the eve of 30th january 2022 the department organizes today's webinar 
highlighting specially on leishmaniasis or kalajar. Today, we have with us Dr. Modhubita Manna, Additional Director of Public Instruction Administration, Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal, and our ex-colleague, who is the speaker of the day. Dr. Manna is working over glorious 30 years on various fields of leishmaniasis. I bid a very warm welcome and convey my regards to her for accepting our invitation and coming over for the webinar despite her busy schedule. We are honored to have you with us. As we celebrate the day, her topic of discussion, whole genome sequencing and multilocal sequence typing of the clinical isolates of Indian Kalajar and para Kalajar dermal leishmaniasis patients will be a great addition to our event. I wish this webinar enlightens us all. Thank you to everyone who made this webinar possible with their opinions and views. To conclude, I wish you all great success in your pursuits. Without any further delay, I would like to request our Honorable Principal Sir to address get the gathering virtually by his inaugural speech. Over to Principal Sir, Dr. Shomu Chattopadhyay. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Shubhona Ha. Uh, uh, in this webinar, I welcome everybody, every students and teachers participating from different colleges and the teachers from our college, yes, who are participating and hearing this webinar. I think this webinar will sometime address for the non-specialized uh, persons also. So, uh, tomorrow is the neglected tropical disease day. So in this webinar, I uh, heartily welcome uh, the distinguished scientist, Professor Modumita Manna, who was once upon a time a professor of our postgraduate department of geology. And she has a very sentimental att attachment to this college and to the colleagues of this, the old colleagues of this college. So I uh, heartily welcome. I am not going to be able to do this. Barasat Government College Prokhodeke, J. Rakumakta Din, Jeta Somagoto, Pray or Chosat Gonta Bade, say Din Tate, Amade, a tropical disease, but tropical country Bolvenuni, tropical country Hoche, Jeshok Desgulo Hoche, PTB Equator Thake, or the Northern Hemisphere, and Southern Hemisphere on Chole Thake, Desgulo, say Gulu, a tropical country Bolet, and Mode Barotecta Unotomo. এবং এই সকল দেশগুলোতে সূর্যের আলো পড়ে বলে সারা বছর ধরে সাধারণত গরম থাকে এবং একটু শ্বেত শ্বেতে ভাব থাকে এবং যার ফলে এখানে বিভিন্ন ধরনের স্কিন ডিজিজ এবং হয় তার মধ্যে প্যারা প্যারা কালা জ্বর কালা জ্বর এর জন্য আমাদের স্কিন ডিজিজ গুলো হয় এবং এই স্কিন ডিজিজ গুলো আগামী ইরাডিকেট করা সম্ভব না কিন্তু প্রিভেন্ট করা সম্ভব তো প্রিভেনশন ইজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি Health and wealth, modern day slogan is prevention, and prevention is actually health and wealth. And by the 230, there will, there will be 50% population who will live in this, in this equatorial zone, that means in the tropical zone. So this is a very burning issue to address, and the, uh, and the issue to be addressed is whole life, uh, whole genome sequences and multi-local sequencing. Uh, uh, so these are geology terms of Kalajor and para Kalajor and uh, uh, dermal diseases uh, arising out of that. So details will be addressed. I think everyone will enjoy this webinar because it is uh, a very common subject uh, in which we uh, usually suffer uh, in, the, uh, in this region for the known uh, for the reasons all non, not known to us, uh, what we can prevent or, or can get a good uh, environment so that this uh, cannot come into our body. So without further delay, I welcome everybody uh, who is attending this webinar and hearing this webinar and will be enriched in the future. The students are there, the teachers are there. And again, not but the... <coughs> uh, and again, I... Also welcome today's distinguished guest and uh, the, uh, the additional director of education sector or education sector who is very busy with uh, the um, different government colleges and non-government colleges to be improved and in the policy making process. And she has given uh, her valuable time uh, to address the 
uh, issues to raise uh, issues. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Principal Sir, and uh, thank you, uh, Head of the Department, Madam Shumana Madam, and uh, Mudumita Madam also. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Uh, Obhijit De, uh, Coordinator of IQAC, uh, Barashar Dhamalan College, uh, to share his views. Over to Obhijit De. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I welcome uh, our main speaker on behalf of IQAC. And definitely, it's a great pleasure to to bring her over in this forum to talk about and enlighten us on this. Uh, it's a very special topic, as I understand. So, uh, and also, I have a great pleasure in uh, in giving thanks to the zoology department to take up all the initiative and to organize such a great uh, meeting today evening. So, so. Let me welcome the speaker once more, and also thanks from the from our college and from IQAC team. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Dil. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Jayati Ghosh, Associate Professor, Barashar Government College, Department of Zoology, and Joint Organizing Secretary of this webinar, uh, will introduce uh, Dr. Mohanita Manna, Madam. Uh, Jayati, please. please. Uh, doctor, doctor, do you, whether whether the recording has been started? Uh, this is uh, yeah. actually the live stream. Uh, the program has been live streamed uh, YouTube. at YouTube. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Shumadeep. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are delighted to have with us Dr. Modhumita Manna, ADPI Education Directorate, Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce her for today's program. Dr. Manna has a bright first class academic career throughout. She is the recipient of the prestigious Shikharatno Award from Higher Education Department, Government of West Bengal 2020 for her contribution in the domain of education. She did her BSc degree from Artswild Presidency College and stood first with first class in her honors exam. For that, she received the coveted Jubilee Postgraduate Merit Prize from the University of Calcutta. She carried out her research program as a UGC fellow in one of the premier research institute of the country, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, Kolkata took her PhD degree from Jadupur University and developed her research career in the field of molecular epidemiology of Indian collager and genomics of Lishmania parasites. She joined the West Bengal Education Service in 1998, served Bethun College, and I am glad to say that she was our colleague at Parashat Government College. She joined the West Bengal Senior Education Service in 2017 and joined Vidhannagar College, Kolkata as the principal. Dr. Manna has completed several major research projects, DBT twining, UGC, UGC DAE, etc., and UGC minor project and was the project guide for two CSIR SRFs. Dr. Manna has been awarded two new major research projects one from the Department of Science and Technology and Biotechnology Government of West Bengal. The other from UGC Department of Atomic Energy in 2019. She has guided three MPhil students, five PhD students under her supervision, received their degrees from Jadupur University, West Bengal Health Science University and University of Calcutta respectively. Three students are at present working under her supervision. Dr. Manna has wide publications in international and national peer-reviewed impact factor journals, including journals of Nature Publishing Group. She has been a reviewer of many reputed journals of Elsevier and Springer. Dr. Manna has presented her research works in many national and international conferences symposia, workshops, and has visited Italy, Australia, Bangladesh on academic events. She is life member of All India Cytology and Genetics, 
Geological Society, Kolkata, and Indian Science News Association. Dr. Manna was also a member of the International Society for Vaccines, USA. She has uh, collaborated also with UGCDA, SINP, IICB, CRNN, etc. for her research work. Dr. Manna's research areas include molecular parasitology, epidemiology, genome typing and genome sequencing, immunology, nanoparticle-based therapeutics against Kalajar, trace element biology, etc. Uh, so today she will speak on whole genome sequencing and multi sequence typing of the clinical isolates of Indian Kalajar and par Parakalajar Dharma Lishmaniasis patients. So as we have been eagerly waiting to hear from you, now, without further delay, I would request Professor Manna to start her presentation. Madam, please. Good evening to everybody. And thank you very much for such a nice presentation. Before that, Dr. Shaha and our principal, Sir Shamut Chattopadhyay, they uh, narrated the purpose of the event very appropriately and nicely. So thanks again. Just give me some time for the presentation. Sorry for the delay. Can you can you see my slides? Yes, ma'am. It's absolutely fine. You can hear you. At the outset, I extend my gratitude to Dr. Shamur Chattopadhyay, Principal Bashad Government College for giving me the chance to speak on the topic related to observation of World Neglected Disease Day. Uh, we know from uh, Shomaditto and others that tomorrow is the day, today is the eve of the day. I am thankful to Dr. Shumana Shah, head of the Department of Zoology, Bharshad Government College, and the members of the organizing committee, as well as IQAC coordinator and the team of Bharshad Government College, for organizing such seminar. It will not be out of context to inform all of you that a part of the research work of my today's talk has been performed here, here means at your place, Bharshad Government College, in the laboratory of zoology department. I am extremely grateful to Dadin principal, Dr. Sh principals, Dr. Shubhashish Dotto and Professor Debesh Roy, as well as uh, Dr. Shumana Shah and all faculty members of the Department of Zoology for extending this opportunity and the cooperation to me and also to my students, even when I have been transferred from here to join as the principal of Vidhanagar College in 2017. So I take this opportunity to convey my heartfelt gratitude to them. Now, 
coming back to today's program at the eve of the world neglected tropical disease a very thoughtful event is being organized by the college which will surely enlighten our students and others about the importance of such observance now Sorry, I'm going to delay. I'm going to presentation. No, I'm going to take it. Slide back. Okay. As we all know that today we are at the eve of the observation of neglected tropical diseases and Sean already told that they are called neglected, neglected because they generally afflict the world's poorest people and historically they, are, they have not received as much attention as other diseases and WHO identified 20 such neglected diseases out of which 12s are in India. So just, th just think of the condition of Indian people, uh, more specifically the poor people. They are poorest of the poor, poor who are afflict afflicted with the diseases. And the diseases are leishmaniasis. Few of them are leishmaniasis, lymphatic filariasis, hookworm infection, ascariasis, leprosy, dengue, chikungunya, rabies, snake bites, scabies, etc. Entities tend to thrive in the developing, developing countries of the world where lack of potable water, poor sanitation, and inadequate healthcare access uh, prevail. Entities take a tremendous toll on global health. The world, the, the WHO estimates that more than 1 billion people suffer from at least one entity. While entities rarely lead to death, but sufferer misfoods are unable to work or are too embarrassed to seek medical care and they live with social stigma. Entities may reinforce the cycle of poverty among the world's disadvantaged population. Now, as I told that uh, as uh, Shumana Shah, Dr. Shah told that for the last 30 years, I am associated with, I am working in the field of Lishmania and Lishmania Seas. So as a student, I was a student of Engineering of Chemical Biology. And as a student, I, had, I was given the task of taxonomical characterization of the clinical isolates of Indian Kalazar and post Kalazar Dharma Lishmania Seas. Today, as research guide, a major part of my research work is still related to the taxonomical identification of the clinical isolates of Kalazar with the help of molecular biological te techniques, many of which were not available at that time. So I am fortunate enough to remain associated with the epidemiological surveillance of a very important tropical disease, which is a disease of poor people of our country. So coming back to the disease where I work for last uh, few, uh, uh, last 30 years, the disease is called Lishmaniasis. It is, uh, as principal said, to, told it is a disease of tropical countries and also the subtropical countries of the world. And globally, the major division of the diseases are visceral Lishmaniasis or Indian Kalaza, cutaneous Lishmaniasis that occurs on the 
skin of the patient or the victim and mucocutaneous ischemiasis vl vl means a visceral ischemiasis it's a neglected tropical disease it is fatal if it is left untreated postcollagen dermal ischemiasis is a peculiar sequel of vl that is found in india and also in other part of the uh, country the interesting part of indian pkdl is that that the it appears after uh, 10 to 20 percent cases of the cure uh, vl patient they develop that sequel and that manifestation as you can see in the figure that manifestation over the skin these are uh, this may be nodular macular and Recently, paracalazar dermal ischemiasis, paracadial, we, now we are uh, talking about paracadial. These cases are reported, and such patients are having picadial manifestation along with concomitant veil. That means when the patient showing the manifestation over the skin, the patches or the nod nodules or, or uh, uh, the, at that at the time, there, that patient has also in endo uh, sp uh, spleen and liver. That means two diseases going parallelly in a same patient. And another important feature of Picadil is that in other countries there are there there are many animal reservoirs uh, uh, we found or scientists they found, but in India there is no report of animal reservoir for the disease. So it is thought that PKDL person, it, they may act as a reservoir of the disease. So controlling of PKDL cases is a real challenge for Indian, India, uh, Indian scientists, Indian doctors, and also government personnel, because to er eradicate the disease, we have to eradicate the mool, that original uh, cause of that disease. Now, globally, if we see the distribution, uh, it, is the, it is the disease of the tropics, as uh, we know. And if, if we concentrate on VL, we will see that the 300,000 VL cases reported annually globally. And 90% of the VL cases are confined to the following countries, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sudan, Northern uh, Eastern Brazil, and 90% of the Indian cases, I'm coming to that, 90% of the Indian real cases, again, concentrated in the state of Bihar. So if we see the condition of Lishmaniasis in India, we will see that 31 districts of Bihar, 11 districts of West Bengal, 4 districts of uh, Jharkhand, and 10 districts of Uttar Pradesh are highly affected. People used to think that West Bengal doesn't have any Kalazar cases, but me and my student, we were going here and there for collecting the samples where the, the endemic zones are there. Uh, so we, oh, we used to go to Birbhum, West Dinajpur, Mazda, and even in the in Canning also, in South Chubish Parguna, we found Kalazar, PKDL, Kalazar cases and PKDL cases. So it's a misconcept that we don't have Kalazar. Now it is for the students that historical background of the, of the disease is that it is discovered by William uh, Lishman and Charles Donovan at the almost in the same time. They described the, 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 the James Sustained Amastigot, that is that two dots. I don't know whether you can, that two dots. Uh, structure is the amastigot structure. They discovered uh, in the autopsy of the soldier, those who are killed uh, by the disease. And uh, simultaneously, they reported that thing. And at that time, Dr. Professor Ronan Ross, the Nobel laureate and the stalwart protozoologist, named the species as Lishmania donovani in 1903, honoring both the scientists. The parasite is kinetoplastic protozoa. That means that trypanosomatid protozoan parasite belonging to the class phylum kinetoplastida. That means they have kinetoplast and they have KDNA.
about the life cycle of the parasite it is it has it is uh, uh, two host up there one is the centra actually centra is the vector and human is the accidental accidental host of the disease actually it uh, it infects the dogs cats um, cattle sheep accidentally it infects uh, human being amastigote is the infective stage and promastigote stage present in the sandfly gut so when sandfly the infected sandfly bites the victim it attaches with the macrophage the very very sentinel of our body and then that has been uh, um, that has been uptaken by that uh, macrophage and proliferated there and then it uh, it is coming out bursting that killing the macrophage and at that time if it is picked up by sand fly again the right. cycle yeah. starts mm -hmm. whenever i talk on kalazar i am feeling that i should mention i should add that this slide that is the the name of even brahmachari everybody knows i know he was the savior and he was the unsung hero who came up with the magic bullet that is urea stiva mine and after his discovery is around 1920 in the in that year after that lives of hundreds of thousands were saved in british india using his formula urea stiva mine now if we come back to the current scenario of this neglected tropical disease we will see that after independence actually it was a part of malaria eradication program for which ddt was uh, has been spreaded all over the country mm -hmm. to destroy the mosquito colony uh, mosquito and in doing so that also destroy the sand fly the vector of the disease and some of the sand flies become resistant and they survived and then after independence it was found that indian colors are returned with full vengeance and that problem has been aggravated further due to emergence of 72 now it has uh, increased 72 uh, 80% drug unresponsive cases towards the first line drug sodium stevogluconate ambutyrin b pentamidine panamycin they are also used as the second line of defense but they are not only costly they are also very toxic miltebosin came up in uh, 2003 which is an oral cancer drug to treat the colaza patient especially the sag sensitive uh, resistant cases and within few years miltebosin mil unresponsive cases were reported and there is as it is a immune suppressive it it suppresses the immune system there is high risk of hiv co infection with veal so all, all these thing in the background for a neglected tropical disease or for any disease taxonomical characterization is essential epidemiological surveillance for the purpose of epidemiological surveillance the taxonomical characterization is a very very crucial step because proper drug regimen is always based on proper identification of the parasite because the drug useful for one species may not work on other species for example stevogluconate will not work on l tropica and phylogenetic relationship analysis is also a very important task for developing developing the evolutionary tree with the advent of recombinant dna technology and other emerging tools and techniques in modern molecular and cell biology research in protozoan parasite has seen a sea change introduction of genome sequencing technique based strategy has brought paradigm shift in the field of species identification uh, epidemiological surveillance of the disease and evolutionary biology etc these are these studies can also be applied in the field of neglected tropical disease to control this thing uh, control the disease in a proper way some of the techniques in the field of parasitology research are serotyping kdna analysis 
multilocus enzyme electrophoresis, multilocus sequence typing, randomly amplified polymorphic DNA, restriction fragment length polymorphism, amplified fragment length polymorphism, whole genome sequencing. I marked four and eight as red, as these two are my two days, two days topic. But then also I'll talk a little bit on, on ML, um, MLEE, that is isoenzyme electrophoresis, because ML, MLEE and MLST are connected, connected in the sense in MLEE, that is the isoenzyme electrophoresis, isoenzyme is enzyme with same, enzyme, same substrate specificity, but different molecular weight. That means in a gel, we will see if you will see their migration different. If we see that their migration is different for enzyme, these are all housekeeping genes. That means the enzyme subcrucial metabolic pathway or uh, other uh, molecular or uh, other enzyme pathway. They are very crucial for life of the parasite. So they are very conserved. And in the gel, uh, when we run the extract of that uh, uh, extract of the parasite, and it is a it is a, a gel. It is not the denaturing gel. It is native gel, and it is light up with different light up with different uh, substrate giving different substrate and if the mobility of two uh, two bands differ then immediately we cannot conclude that they belong to same species because not a single enzyme can define a population but it is a species marker that means that mobility will tell you that they are with different molecular weight then that means there is a mutation and for that that changes occur so it has been considered for long and WHO still day considered MLEE as the gold standard for identifying the uh, parasite or pathogen or other organism. It was so beautiful. But with the advent of, as I told, uh, molecular biological techniques and genome typing, MLST came up. MLST is the multi, it is the same thing that we are looking for MLEE, we are looking for the protein or the enzyme and MLST, we are looking, it is a little bit refined again, it, we are looking for the genes responsible for that enzyme and we are sequencing that uh, uh, gene and we are looking for the variation if any, uh, if any uh, present there, then that would be utilized for the construction of the uh, phylogenetic tree and uh, taxonomic identification purpose. Rapid, it is, RAPID is called rapid. It is a, a PCR based technique and it is also statistically designed in such a way that the random primer will magnify, will amplify the genome in three or four or five places and that will give you a profile. I, I forgot to mention for MLEE, there will be a number of enzymes you have to run with number of uh, clinical isolates and that will develop a picture or profile which is known as zymodeme. That means a population is defined by its enzyme profile. It is called the zymodeme. And zymodeme is species specific uh, profile or marker. Similarly, RPD is also a species specific marker. RFLP is also a species specific marker. AFLP is also same. And genome sequencing is sequencing the whole genome to look for the difference, to look for the similarities. And these are the very strong tools for taxonomical identification. Sorry, it was sequence typing or MLST is a technique of for typing the multiple loci. MLST is a nucleotide based uh, sequence based approach to uncover the allelic variant in conserved re, uh, genes for the purpose of characterizing, subtyping, and classifying the member of the microorganism population. It appears best in population genetics and epidemiological study. 
the technique involves as i said the pcr amplification followed by dna sequencing the workflow is like that the nucleotide sequence determination of gene fragment by sequencing determination of genetic diversity and allelic profile multi local sequence analysis by assigning a sequence type unique sequence type and the relativeness of relativeness of the isolates are made by comparing the allelic profiles these these works are this part of the work has been done in barashab government college where my student nivedita worked very hard with the help of uh, her teachers in the department she ultimately succeeded to develop standardize and develop the techniques purpose as i told purpose i already told the purpose and to do the uh, mlst scheme as i told for mlee it is the profile the scheme a scheme b scheme c are nothing but the construction of the profile here with our strain our clinical isolates some part of it is the wet lab uh, work and other part is the dry lab uh, work so with the help of the dna sequence we have in our hand with the and the blast search giving in the in in the dry lab condition that blast search will give you will give you uh, will search the similar sequence as you know and accordingly scheme or group or profile uh, can be developed and in doing so nucleotide diversity pi value and haplotype diversity hd indices are measured and it has been seen that the highest uh, pi value is found in fumarate Hydro, uh, hydrogenase fh followed by enolase and uh, enol and g6 pdh and highest uh, haplotype diversity is found in acer followed by aconitase fh in indian isvaniar donovani isolate and this nucleotide polymorphism uh, there is a absence of nucleotide polymorphism in small medium synthesis hence this locus is denoted as the conserved locus uh, for indian Lishvania, Donovani isolates. So these are the intraspecies haplotype network developed in our lab with the help of the blast search. That in all has three haplotype, G6PD has uh, five haplotype, and uh, fumarate hydrolase it, it has say, eight uh, eight haplotypes. And intraspecific with the help of the intraspecific allelic profiles, phylogenetic. Uh, groups are constructed, and ultimately we found that that in, uh, that uh, there are four distinct cluster. There are four distinct cluster that is here, 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 here that are found among the clinical isolates of Lishvania species. When we are looking for interspe interspecies uh, interspecific relationship, that time we are taking the non-synonymous substitution because synonymous we know. Synonymous substitution is the change in nucleotide sequence that doesn't reflect in the amino acid. That means the redundancy theory we know uh, that that change will not be reflected. Same amino acid will, will be seen though there is a change in the nucleotide sequence. That is called the synonymous. So it is the non-synonymous where we are putting our interest. So in this way, those non those enzymes with non-synonymous uh, substitution we are taking them to construct the tree these are uh, showing uh, you for uh, showing you for uh, giving the idea about the synonymous these are these enzyme that nucleotide sequence we are not taking for in doing so interspecific phylogenetic analysis with six housekeeping gene we came up with the uh, the observation is that that the phylogenetic analysis of six concatenated loci sequence could clearly differentiate the two species within the Lishvania species complexes. It has two species, Lishvania, 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 Vienna, and also with the very high bootstrap support. For unique sequence typing also we have done, and here we have found that uh, T5 regarding T5, I must say few, uh, words T5 is a uh, clinical isolate. We have isolated 
from Jharkhand, where after after doing the drug sensitivity assay, uh, assay we have seen that it is uh, it is not taking up it is it is drug resistant in one way. Uh, SSG resistant and other way when doing the characterization, taxonomical characterization, uh, we have seen that this isolate is not L donovani, it is L tropica, which, which is very interesting because historically it is the L donovani which is the causal agent of Indian colour. And at my time of research, nobody will ac would accept that Tropica is within the, Tropica can cause the color hazard. But, but when I was, uh, this, I am working as a research guide, I came up with a, uh, with a uh, isolate, which uh, though isolated from confirmed color hazard patient, it is the Tropica. And for that, I have two or three very good publications. Mm -hmm. That T5, it has give, uh, gave, uh, it has given a, particular type of uh, sequence typing, ST3. And in a, an other uh, uh, yeah, it is also in one way, it is giving that thing for alert. And for in all, it is the ST6, it is sharing it with T3, T7, these are our isolates. So they, it is showing the T5 is showing both the features for one, one, one uh, feature, unique feature for alert and one mixed feature for inner. That is the beauty of the taxonomical characterization. In doing so, it is seen ICD is such a beautiful uh, enzyme and uh, nucleotide and the, its nucleotide sequence. It can differentiate faithfully the, all the geographical uh, uh, type, types of the strains. So, so what is the outcome? The study illustrated that interspecies uh, inter genetic diversity exists between Indian clinical isolates of L. Donovani with that unique uh, sequence type. In particular, genus dis uh, Lishmania display high nucleotide diversity among coding region of housekeeping genes throughout genomic sequence. L. tropica isolate has unique ST3, uh, as I told, and MLST scheme uh, A a concatenated sequence could clearly differentiate species complexes and species level organization with high bootstrap support. An interspecies level of phylogenetic analysis can be done with the help of ICD, and it revealed a strong correlation between the molecular data and geographical origin. So now I'm coming to the my second part of my talk. That is whole genome sequencing of Indian color and parachidial isolates. We have taken uh, 10 clinical isolates. That is in my right side, you will see drug sensitivity of the isolate. We have done it in our laboratory. Disease type, which uh, what kind of disease it manifests. Study code we have given as R, R1, R2, R3 for resistant, SSG, SAG resistant, VL sensitivity, S1, S2, S3. Paracadial, we have um, we have many paracadial. Ultimately, we are established, we, we, are, we, could, we are able to stabilize three, K1, K2, K3. And we got one, uh, another very beautiful strain, we got, isolate we got, it is built a fusin resistant, MR. So with the help of the whole genome sequencing, this part of the work has been done in Shaha Institute of Nuclear Physics in collaboration with uh, Professor Partho Shaha and also the bioinformatics part also done by Shoikot, Dr. Shoikot Chakraborty, senior uh, uh, principal scientist in Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. And the weight part, weight lab, uh, lab work, uh, weight lab work was done by a student as well as the dry lab work also. Where, what we have seen in nutshell, comparison of aneuploidy profiles of the L. Donovan strain um, obtained from whole genome analysis of clinical isolates. Chromosome numbers are indicated here. And the heat map, it is called the heat map. The study codes of L. Donovan isolates are mentioned across the bottom here. And uh, dendrogram of the top, this is the dendrogram of the top, indicates the clustering of the strain based on the similarity of aneuploidy 
file. Similarly, the dendrogram on the left side represents the clustering of the chromosome. And the insert shows the color. The color means the red color is the uh, indicate the user indicate the ploidy of the chromosome, diploid, uh, triploid, tetraploid, etc. In doing so, we came up with some mutated gene which are, mutated genes which are found only in the paracardial strain. And with the help of the software, uh, we have seen that 13 of them are uh, known previously known uh, uh, proteins and this is done with the help of KEGG pathway database outcome of our uh, result is that the SOMI value of each strain uh, is on an average 30 disomic chromosome between uh, SSGS and SSGRs, SOMI variation was found in chromosome number such, such, and such only. Proportion of tetrasomy were estimated to be more in the resistance strain. Uh, that is, the, they are the uh, VL resistance strain. In paracardial sensitive strain, 24 genes gene mutation are unique. Correlation of development of SSG resistance with chromosome aneuploidy and non synonymous genetic variation in the coding sequence are found. Higher proportion of aneuploidy were observed in the VL mil, uh, mil or mil resistance strain with 170 unique mutation. Huge number of data are in our hand, but we don't know how to handle this thing. Only a part of it came out in a publication last year. Interestingly, one pentasomy at chromosome 23 and one pentasomy at chromosome 31, which could be significant in the development of resistance towards miltafusin. Significant CNB high copy numbers are observed in miltafusin resistance strain. And this is the uh, multi drug resistant uh, protein A uh, loci, and it may be it, uh, it confers a resistance towards the miltafusin. And absence of ABC transporter like protein is found in SSGR which is expected. So this is the last part of my talk. I don't know how much time I have already taken, but very quickly I will end. That is, uh, with the all, all, nucleus, all the nucleotide sequence data, uh, it has been done with, in the software, the uh, protein structure from that sequence, what protein, protein or totally it is a dry lab work, has been done. And we are interested with the surface protein or transporter protein for uh, seeing, looking into the uh, drug resistance phenomenon because they will be helpful. We know they will be helpful for uh, catching the, the gene or sequence. So we are looking for the surface proteins or transporter. In doing so, we came up with this um, nucleotide sequence in data gene DB uh, data, data bank. And ultimately, we found that that uh, the, after the mutation, what is the, the difference between the wild type protein sequence that has been um, estimated from the, our nucleotide sequence data and the, that um, protein sequence of the, mut um, the mutation sequence has been put into the wild type and seeing that what happened in the structure, secondary structure, and we see that it replaced helix with strand at position nine. I'll show you the 3D uh, structure. Uh, 982 place top code on a 986 position and the structure is like that it is the white type it is the mutant and here the white arrow shows the monster structure showing the deletion of oil from the mutated protein maybe uh, it it is linked with some uh, drug resistance phenomena that we not not yet we are not yet uh, sure similarly another um, protein secondary structure has been uh -huh. done for uh, pre glycoprotein E. Here we will see, you see, here the it is the wild type um, structure, it is a mutant. And when we, we merge uh, 3D merging down, secondary structure analysis of this protein, this mutation at ABC transporter, transparent domain, second domain, results in the replacement of the coil at position. 1238 and 1239 with the helix which is present in ABC transporter transmembrane type domain three means one domain controlling the other domain and they are the transporter that means it is it
I think somehow uh, Madam's connection has been lost. Hey, Ona, kya abar ek tu join korte bolte hain abe? Okay, okay, dekh chhe. Hey, Joyce, di phone korte. Amma ke ki shona jai nahi laste. हेलो मैडम लास्ट एक को कनेक्ट होना जाए नहीं ना कनेक्शन टा लॉस्ट होएगा इसी लो कनेक्शन टा लॉस्ट होएगा इसी लो लास्ट टू मिनट्स लास्ट टू मिनट्स अच्छा ताली लास्ट टू मिनट्स तो आपने तो धोनो बात दिए थी यार आमर कोला वोडर टा तो धोनो बात दिए थी आर शेड दो मिनट आर बो आर आम के माफ करे दी थैंक I mean, boost the party. I didn't understand that the connection is not there. It's okay, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manna. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this amazing presentation. Now the session is actually open for uh, question and answer session. Uh, I would like to request uh, our joint organizing secretary and associate professor, Dr. Jayati Ghosh, and our uh, MSc third semester student, uh, Shomia Mitra, to carry on. Uh, the question and answer session. Now the session is open for discussion. Thank you so much, Dr. Manna. Thank you. A very interesting presentation and a great ex uh, experience altogether. Uh, we are very thankful that uh, you could share your knowledge and experiences with all of us. Uh, and we do have questions to ask you. If you are ready, then we can start the question and answer session. For question, nobody is ready. Just give me the question. If you, I, if I can answer, I will answer. If okay. I answer, I'll not answer. <laughs> okay, we have one question uh, from Shumana Shaha. Uh, how many genes are in Lishmania? And another question, uh, what is whole genome MLST? Yeah. Uh, how many genes means it's a huge, uh, yeah, 36 chromosomes are there. Uh, how many genes means coding genes, non-coding genes? Um, I cannot say exactly how many. Uh, immediately, I cannot remember. But total chromosome number is 36. And whole genome MLST, whole, it is not whole, whole uh, MLST is the multilocus sequence typing. Yes. It is the multilocus sequence, uh, sequence typing uh, means the enzyme, the housekeeping gene, that the, the uh, metabolic pathway enzyme or surface uh, uh, protein enzyme, transporter enzyme, uh, these are uh, sequenced. In MLEE, the enzymes are enzymes are um, uh, characterized. And looking at the gel picture, we will understand, we score the mobility of the enzyme mobility in the gel and uh, we develop the dendro dendrogram and we say that they are closer, they are jacket relatedness cal is calculated like that. In case of MLST, the typing, the variation in the typing, that is, that is the crucial part, that the haplotype and their nucleotide variation. And there are also the profiles are constructed. It is not the one sequence, one enzyme I will sequence and I will comment. It is not like that. Okay. It is around uh, uh, 3 billion genes are there. Uh, it is around uh, 32 
million, I think, means I couldn't remember exactly. Uh, BPM or uh, number of genes are there, but we are taking only the coding uh, coding region, that is its chromosome. And we have uh, we have around 900 uh, RNA, so that is the coding part. Okay. Thank you, uh, madam. Okay. Uh, I have one question uh, hmm. that um, a large number of asymptomatic uh, Leishmania infections are also uh, prevalent in, in the endemic regions. So uh, how we can speed up the detection of this category, uh, asymptomatic ca cases of Leishmania infection? Yeah, it's a very uh, good question. The detection procedure uh, based on, basically it's based on, on rapid antigen test. Yeah. So if antigen, uh, we get that thing, the rapid antigen test will, uh, RK39, that will determine that the patient is truly a patient. Though it is asymptomatic, that asymptomatic cases, the, these are the they are the dangerous. They are the dangerous part of the whole scenario because they never come to the hospital. They never go for the treatment, and also the PKDL. PKDL causes the social stigma, but it it doesn't cause cause any uh, severe health hazards. Hazard for for that, uh, the patient, the victims are not coming to doctors, and that is why. The disease cannot be eradicated. So nowadays, I when I once I went to Jharkhand, I have seen Jharkhand government work very beautifully. They instead of the the patient is coming to them, the ASHA group of uh, nurse uh, or I don't know the that group you know ASHA, that ASHA yeah. group they are going to the villages to give medicine to the patient, so that nobody are left. So in this way, they control that thing very beautifully. Though, as it is the it is the disease related to the poverty and also um, lack of education. As you know, poverty and lack of education goes go, ha go hand in hand. Uh, that thing, what happened when I went to one Jharkhand village? I have seen uh, as soon as they came to know that we have come here for collecting sample, though we have we are we have gone there with doctor who who treat the uh, uh, patient, they all left the camp. So that is the social taboo is there that instead of coming towards the uh, medication, they are going away, and government gave them uh, giving them lot of support that also they are using in a different way, it means they are not taking it properly. So that is the problem. It is uh, epidemiological surveillance or epidemiological observation is, uh, you know, epidemiological work is very, uh, very crucial and critical thing. It cannot be done by doctor, uh, doctors alone or the scientists or researcher alone. It is the social worker, it is the doctors, it is the researcher, it is the government. All should work hand in hand to eradicate such kind of disease. That is right. Thank you, madam. I agree with you. Uh, uh, presently, you are uh, talking about the RDT-based antibody detection kit. And uh, yes. that is, we you know, uh, available in the immunochromatographic strip form for the VL. <laughs> now, uh, um, uh, in your opinion, how much effective is it in... Uh, it had, uh, detection of uh, it is uh, very good. it is it is very good it is working good okay and though that cheap uh, that the dna based chip also is coming up that is also coming up but that would be costly Achha. but even uh, if we develop a quick and efficient diagnostic system still we have limited numbers of drugs so yeah, our drug problem is tremendous because whichever drug you use today Tomorrow, the drug resistance will come up. That is our experience. SSG is under 70%. You just think 70% cases unresponsive. For amputation, amputation, the resistance uh, coming up. Pentamidine, there's two uh, toxic, ne nephrotoxic, uh, cardiac um, arrest. Um, it could uh, happen, uh, it could uh, uh, arrest the uh, heart. So they are very toxic and at the same time, they are very costly. Miltebosin is an oral drug. It, it is working so beautifully when it, it is introduced in 2003. But then again, after a few years, within a few years, again, the resistance variety uh, came up. So it is for bacteria or whatever you would say, whenever it, some organism is exposed to a drug, it will develop a uh, way to avoid the drug. 
So it is the fight between the parasites and yes. homeopaths. Yes, Paras yes, don't yes, think yes. that parasite is not intelligent. It is intelligent enough that COVID, you see the COVID situation, one after another kind of uh, variant is coming up. And uh, doctors and uh, governments and we are all we are all puzzled and we are suffering a lot and we cannot we are not able to control that the disease that is uh, for that neglected disease also it is the same so, same thing so is there any hope for uh, an effective and safe vaccine in near future if you want to uh, get, uh, get a take a serious answer from me my answer is no because for a long time i worked on uh, vaccination program, therapeutics, part, profile access. Uh, in my opinion, vaccination for Vishwaniasis is not a very simple job to do. Even the DNA vaccine, even the DNA vaccine, it is not a very simple way to come. Uh, my last question, uh, that is, uh, as we are talking about the neglected tropical diseases, so um, is there any influence of helminthic infection or worm infection uh, on uh, clinical manifestation of leishmaniasis? Uh, because uh, very common, this is very common in poor people living in unhygienic condition. Listen, so, it is an immune suppressive condition. So it is not the helminths only. Any disease can... Yeah attack and can cause uh, severity in the patient. And the patients are poor, poorest of the poor. Yes. yes. When I went to Mujapur, uh, Mujapur in Bihar, it is a high frequency zone. I have seen the, the people are so poor that uh, they cannot miss one day of our job at the field. So we are waiting for them, waiting for them that they would come. If they don't go to the field, they will lose their uh, money and they will not uh, get their food properly. So that is the that is the socioeconomic condition related to a particular disease. That if you want to handle it, you have to change you have, change the socioeconomic condition. That is not you cannot do overnight. Ratarati ke vita kote parbe na. So and there uh, the HIV. Uh, I got one patient that is infected with HIV. So these are the things. And as well as they are very illiterate, you cannot make them understand the severity or the danger of the disease. Yes, I agree with you, madam. And I have uh, one another question by Ritam Mondol here. Is DNA vaccination possible to treat collagen? He asked that. Then DNA vaccine come. Then it will be used for treatment. DNA vaccine has not come. The work is going on. So, if it uh, it is accepted by the government, if the trial is going on, if it goes well, then uh, we can comment. Thank you. Uh, so, Mia, please see whether there are any more questions in the YouTube chat box. Um, no, ma'am, there are no questions, but um, I would like to ask one question if you permit. Definitely. Uh, so, ma'am, um, the seminar was really beautiful and excellent. So, indeed. So, ma'am, I wanted to know um, um, uh, what is the men uh, since you have worked like very much on this uh, topic. So, you can tell me um, uh, what is the mental effect or the psychological effect on the persons who you know affect who are affected from this disease. You know, this, this scene from the outside and. Uh, I'm sure they will, there will be any mental problem or psychological effect that the person will be suffering. After. It is not for Lishwaniasis. It is for all diseases. It is for all diseases. Mental problem, psychological problem. If I, uh, that during the COVID infection of mine, I was thinking that I am dying. Seriously. I'm, I was thinking that I, I, I am dying. So that mental trauma, that is another aspect. That is your your thinking is very nice. That is another aspect. That is that should be handled by uh, expert in the field. That what are the implication of the? So one thing I can say that the poor people they uh, I have I uh, went to Mujafarpur. I went many places of Bihar during my PhD day when I was student. I was PhD guide. I used to go with my students. I used to go such places where 
uh, one week after we left the place, the DSP of the area, the car of uh, his blown away by the my waist. So uh, it is not very easy for uh, for uh, the government to control that disease uh, alone. It is the awareness of our part. It is a research. It is a doctor's dedication. All are linked together for fighting any disease, not the neglected tropical disease, any disease. Exactly. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Manna, for answering all the questions patiently. We have found the perfect takeaway message from your speech. Uh, and it is true that uh, more awareness and research are needed to overcome the obstacles related to collagen diagnosis and treatment. So uh, now uh, I will hand over the platform to Shomaditya. चुप कर I would uh, like to thank our distinguished speaker, Dr. Mudhumita Manna Madam, for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very meaningful and interesting. I extend my gratitude to our honorable guest, Madam, that to take out time from her very, very busy schedule to grace this event. One thing I would like to share that Dr. Mudhumita Manna Madam is one of the best teacher and researcher in the field of parasitology I found in my short period of service. Now, no, 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 I have a colleague, I have seen it, I have seen now I would like to express my deep gratitude to our respected principal sir and coordinator of IQSC for their presence in this seminar. I would like to express my gratitude to all of my esteemed colleague, joint organizing secretary, Dr. Somaditya De, Dr. Joyati Ghosh, our respected convener and head madam, Dr. Sumona Shaha, and member of organizing committee, Dr. Ivy Kundu and Dr. Enamul Hawk and Srimuthi Indrani Banerjee for their excellent contribution to make this webinar great success. So thank you. I just hand over uh, the <clears throat> mic to Dr. Somadito De for the next uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sikantada. Uh, I am hereby requesting all the participants to be online with us uh, for the second session of this particular awareness program as well as the webinar. Uh, for the first part of the second session, uh, I will request uh, Dr. Enamul Hawk to coordinate the e-poster presentation. Uh, several students uh, of undergraduate and postgraduate uh, courses have uh, prepared some particular posters on this event uh, so that we can avoid the general people as well as our academic uh, faculties and all the students. So over to Enamul Hawk. Thank you, Shumanitto. Good evening, Principal Sir, Modumita Ma'am, and Shumunadi, and all my colleagues. In this session, I will show the posters prepared by my students and our colleague, Dr. Joyati Ghosh. I 
Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you. <laughs> Is the poster visible? Yes. Hello. Fast paced. Yes. Yes. Fast paced. 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 ठीक है ठीक है ओके नेग्लेक्टेड ट्रॉपिकल डिजीज इज ए ग्रुप ऑफ और ग्रुप ऑफ डिजीज दैट इफेक्ट द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट पुअरेस्ट एंड द मार्जिनलाइज पीपल प्रीडोमिनेंटली इन द रिमोट एंड द हार्ड टू रीच कम्युनिटीज व्हिच लैक एक्सेस टू द सेफ वाटर सैनिटेशन एंड हेल्थ सर्विसेज almost one in six people are affected by the one of the neglected tropical disease now till now starting at only 15 tropical ndt diseases are present but now almost 40 are included initially it was bacterial helminth and protozoal disease but now viral and fungal disease and ectoparasites are also included in this group the first poster is our colleague joyati madam in which she shows that neglected tropical how the neglected tropical disease occur and how it why it is neglected actually neglected tropical disease the name derived because that it affects the poorest people and the second one is the the severity of the symptoms develop later on then the third is the deficient drug high cost of the drug which are available third one is the neglected by funder researchers and the policy makers because most of the developed countries people didn't know the name of the disease and the last one is the most of the countries affected by this disease are unable to afford the needful financial means which reduces these diseases so the basic thing is comes what is the basic things is the lack of drinking water safe drinking water sanitation and hygiene vector management large scale preventive treatment and the reservoirs because the control of these is demand high costs the next poster is of the overview of the neglected tropical disease which is prepared by our students it is the third one is the sister sarcosis the cystocercosis is the disease caused by tenia solium tenia saginata and diphyllobrithum latum and how it occur is shown in the life cycle it's a life cycle of the tenia solium dengue it is a viral disease caused by the flavivirus genus and transmitted by the aedes mosquitoes if the infected mosquitoes bites a person the disease develop from 4 to 13 days and the symptoms are the high fever joint pain so it is also known as bone brick fever chikungunya chikungunya is also a neglected tropical disease and is caused by the alpha virus this disease is so same symptom like dengue 
but the outcome in dengue the platelets live this is not so harmful like dengue but it also causes joint pain severe joint pain and the prevention is is the destruction of the vector edis Ascariasis. Ascariasis is caused by the Ascaris lumbricoids and it affects one of the five people as affected by Ascariasis effect almost 807 million people worldwide. And it's transmitted by the water. And the prevention is safe drinking water. And the highest prevalence in the Asian Pacific Island, India, Southeast Asia, China, Latin America, and Caribbean countries. The symptom is cough, persistent shortness of breathing, wheezing, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, And it's caused by Dinanculus. And then Cagus disease is caused by Typenosoma cruzi. It's a protozoan disease. Vector protection. Most of the viral disease is transmitted by the vector. So, destruction of the vector is the most essential to protect ourselves from the dengue, chikungunya, and some. We slide that to expand cold with No, I need to zoom out for that. Kuchi. Is that right? Trachoma. It's a bacterial disease caused by the... It's a bacterial disease. Caused by Chlamydia trachomatis and is just found in mainly in the Africa, Middle East countries, Mexico, and the large part of the Asia. And the treatment is antibiotic azithromycin. It is transmitted by the flies, the mechanical transfer. And almost 84 million people worldwide is affected by the disease. It causes conjunctivitis and the cronial obesity and lead to blindness. So That's all from our students.
thank you uh, enamunda for coordinating the eposter presentation session uh, thank you all the students uh, for participating and uh, for the presentation of the posters uh, for such nice and illuminating posters uh, actually as per our discussion uh, we will uh, circulate as well as we will publish all the posters uh, in our uh, college website and uh, the best of three posters will be published uh, on in our academic journal academic uh, departmental journal so uh, we will now move to the next part we will now proceed to the next part uh, we will play some uh, recorded uh, mini oral presentations and group discussions of undergraduate as well as postgraduate students i am here by presenting the recorded lectures So this is the first lecture prepared by Basushri Dandopat, one of our uh, undergraduate same three students. Today, I, Basushri Dandopat, from semester three of UC Department of Zoology, is going to share some words on World Entity Day. What is World Entity Day? World Entity Day is an awareness day to address the neglected tropical diseases. 30th January. 2022, on the second World Entity Day, we are turning this awareness into action. Originally, it was announced by the Crown Prince Court of Abu Dhabi at 2019, reaching the Milestone Forum. In our daily lives, we all are very much acquainted with the term disease. We all have the slightest of idea about the complex and deadly diseases that exist. But there are other diseases too that affect more than a billion people on earth with a one billion at risk. As the name suggests, NDD are the diseases that result from the tropical infections that affect the people belonging to the impoverished communities where they do not get access to clean and hygienic habits. Mostly observed in the countries of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Even our country, India, experiences the world's largest burden of at least 11 major entities as described by WHO. Some of these viral, parasitic, and bacterial diseases include Shadows disease, Ascariosis, Dengue fever, and many more. The World Health Organization has established a list of 17 entities. Let's come and briefly discuss about some of the entities to understand what exactly we should do to prevent them. Firstly comes Shadow City, which affects approximately 6 million people on Earth. This disease is transmitted by the triatomine bug, which releases the parasite Trypanosoma cruzi in the blood. This disease can be mild, causing just swelling and fever. It can also last for a long time. If it is left untreated for a long time, it can lead to congestive heart failure. Most common symptoms of these diseases are abdomen or muscle pain, headache with fever, and painless swelling around the eye or skin rash. Proper improved housing and spraying insecticides inside the houses to eliminate the triatomine bug is very important to prevent the spread of this disease. Also, screening the blood donations for shaggers is another step to prevent the spreading of this disease. Treatment of mother to baby cases is also very important. Next comes Puruli ulcer, which is a rare and exotic bacterial infection of the skin and soft tissues. It is caused by the organism Mycobacterium ulcerum. It usually starts with a painless swelling of the affected area, which can be arms, legs, or face. It is treated by antibiotics. To prevent this disease, what is really important is to use gardening gloves, long sleeve shots, and trousers when walking outdoors. We should also see that we cover any kind of scratches or cut we receive while walking outdoors. We must also prevent bites of any kind of insects. 
Cystitharcosis is caused by tip 1 infection that affects the brain, muscles, and the tissues. It spreads through contaminated water, food, and unclean hands. The symptoms of cystitharcosis is growth of lumps under the screen. Dengue fever is a mosquito borne viral disease. It is majorly found in India. The symptoms of this disease include high fever, headache, rash, and joint pain. It can be life threatening. These are some of the injuries. Now we can very well understand the importance of healthy, hygienic habits in our daily lives. Who has given us five strategies to tackle this burden of entity, which include veterinary public health, vector control, disease management, and water sanitation and hygiene within a systematic and cross-cutting approach. Regional success has already been achieved largely with mass drug administration campaigns. For diseases with proven elimination strategies and tools, a focused approach continues to accelerate their elimination. We have come a long way on this journey, but we have to still move on with a constructive and positive mindset to build our NDD free world one day. Thank you. The second presentation uh, was prepared by uh, our uh, BSc third semester students, Jolly, Sheikh Rifa. Rajdeep and Nandan. Proceeding to the second presentation. I think we are going to take another one. What is the question? We are going to take another one. What is the question? 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 Thank you. 
and ultimately leaches into the body of the host, and the infection occurs. Through so this, a new cycle starts again. If we consume the metacyclic contaminated fresh water vegetation, then it transmits into our body, and the disease occurs. As a result of fresh usage, it mainly attacks the bile duct and causes the destruction of hepatic tissue, causes nausea, diarrhea, cirrhosis. Hepatomegaly, stenomegaly, abdominal pain also causes fever, fibrous addition of gallbladder and gallstone. Implication of this disease or fasciolysis is very much effective for farmers because it causes a tremendous economical loss of cattle and sheep. That's why the productivity of animals will reduce. Self sanitation and self awareness is very much important and it is the key to control it. To prevent it, the low-income population or these people having such no idea of self-sanitation, that's why this disease occurs. Their small negligence causes a big impact on their health. Avoiding raw, contaminated food or improperly cooked food and water is the best solution for avoiding or for preventing this disease. Cyclobenzazole is a drug of choice of avoiding raw. Contaminated food or improperly cooked food and water is the best solution for avoiding or for preventing this disease. Cyclobenzazole is a drug of choice of this disease against immature and adult. Last but not the least, people should care for their health. An estimated 91.1 million people are at risk for infection worldwide. Lastly, I will say that I am so much lucky for being a participant. For this event, and also I will say that stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you. This is the last presentation for today, and uh, done by Trisha Bishash, Mona Lisa Mondol, and Raya Dutto, our MSc Taiwan students. So proceeding to the last presentation. All is now being recorded. Hello everyone. Today we have gathered here for a group discussion arranged by PG Department of Geology of Bashar Gordon College on the occasion of LGD Day. I from behalf of my group welcome you all and thank you all for arranging such an event. We are going to do a group discussion about LGD that is lymphatic fibrosis. In my group, I am Trisha Vishwas and my other group mates are Monalisa Mondol and Raya Dutta. I am starting the group discussion. So first of all. Uh, what is NPD? NPDs are a group of infections that are most common among marginalized communities in the developing regions of Africa, Asia, and the Americas. They are caused by a variety of pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, uh, protozoa, and parasitic things. Next to it, neglected tropical diseases. CD, a researcher in neglected tropical diseases, knows 30 neglected tropical diseases such as Ascariasis, Bully ulcer, Javas disease. Uh, who for infection, human African trypanosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, etc. So, first of all, we, we want uh, that is what is vector? A vector is a living organism that transmits an infectious agent from an infected animal to a human or another animal. Vectors are frequently arthropods such as mosquitoes, teeth, flies, fleas, and lice, etc. Uh, next uh, uh, topic types of vectors. There are mainly two types of vectors, immunology vectors and molecular biology vectors. Immunology vectors are basically two types, arthropod vectors and rodent vectors. And molecular biology vectors are also four types, that is cloning vector, viral vector, expression vector, and shuttle vector. Uh, next first, lymphatic filariasis vector. Uh, so, lymphatic filariasis is a vector-borne disease being transmitted by mosquitoes, example from Pule, Sanofilis, and Aedes mosquitoes. In Africa, the most common vector is anophilis, and in the Americas, it is cumulus. Aedes and Mansonia uh, can transmit the infection in the Pacific and in Asia. Causative agent. Uh, there are at least eight species of filarial parasites that are specific to man. Uh, so they are Ogeria bancrofti, Zucchia malai, Zucchia pinguli, Oncotheria polyolus, Aloa loa, uh, Mansonia ozardi. Out of these, the first three, Ogeria bancrofti, Zucchia malai, Pugia simuri causes filariasis. 
In this diagram, various part of the mosquito is shown and uh, food slide that is uh, first is a Rucinaria bankruptcy, second is Rubia Malay, and uh, third is Rubia Timori. Uh, next, uh, third, a mode of transmission of lymphatic filariasis. The parasites that cause lymphatic filariasis are transmitted from human to human through the bites of furious and anophilic mosquitoes. The female mosquitoes take the microscopic forms of the parasitic home, that is microfilaria, from an infected person during a blood meal. The microfilaria develop into larva and when the mosquito feeds on another person, the larva enters the skin, punctured by the mosquito bite. The larva travels via the lymphatic vessels where they develop into adult rooms all over the body. After making the female play millions of eggs, it is developing to microfilaria, completing the life cycle. Here in this diagram, uh, the, this presents a life cycle of Uteria bankruptcy. In 90% cases, Uteria bankruptcy is a causative agent of lymphatic filaria as it occupies the lymphatic system including lymph nodes, so in chronic cases it leads to the symptoms of infection. The so control and prevention of lymphatic filariasis. The lymphatic filariasis is a vector one parasitic disease, 90% of cases which is caused by ujuria bankruptcy. The lymphatic filariasis is spread from person to person by single cumulus mosquito. Uh, so the lymphatic uh, so the mosquito that carries the microscopic own is only bite between the hours of dust and dawn. Also, avoiding mosquito bites is the best form of prevention. Uh, so, if you live in an area with lot of mosquitoes, sleep under a mosquito neck at night. And if you travel to an area with lot of mosquitoes, uh, sleep in an air conditioned room where long sleeps and trousers. And we can also use mosquito repellent on exposed skin. Another approach to prevention includes uh, giving anti-commitous medicine that kill the microscopic holes. This is the control and prevention of OJ of lymphatic filariasis. Now we can see the treatment of we can treat this disease by antiparasitic drugs like uh, diets and carbohydrates and cycles. And now coming to the slide, operands, uh, Uchira bankruptcy is the most widely distributed filaria parasite of humans. Approximately uh, 2 billion people are residing in 80 countries at a risk, while an estimated of 110 billion people are infected. It is found throughout the tropics and the subtropics with highest prevalence in Asia, while in India it is 5%. And survives uh, sub Saharan Africa, where it is 8%, and others uh, places like Pacific Islands, areas of South Africa. Which area bankruptcy is nocturnally periodic, uh, except in Pacific Islands, where it is sub periodic. In India, it is estimated about 600 million people at a risk residing in 250 districts of 20 states in India. Highly endemic states are Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Tamil Nadu. Kerala and Gundar, Evelyn and low in northeastern states, Jomu and Kashmir, and the Punjab. And now coming to the slide, uh, clinical manifestations. There is a point, uh, males are commonly affect, more affected than females. In acute cases, uh, there is a high fever, like filaria fever, and uh, lymphatic inflammation are seen. In chronic filariasis, uh, there is elephantiasis, accumulation of leaf causes swelling. <laughs> In this picture, the symptoms are the receipt of drug resilience and pain in the start. For example, in case of hemodynamic change that has been seen in all four participants in the group that uh, received the two drug resilience. Impact of COVID-19 on NTD, that is lymphatic filariasis in here. Now, COVID-19 affected NTD health services is a big problem now. NTD reductions mainly reported from countries with middle or low income, where health services are already facing numerous challenges, like Southeast Asia, Eastern Mediterranean, and Africa. The infected tropical disease are a diverse group of condition of bacterial, viral, parasitic, fungal, and non-communicable origin. Their epidemiology is complex and often related to environmental conditions. Many are picture born, have annual reservoirs, and are associated with complex life cycles. All the factors make the public health control challenging. Across the whole section of essential health services, NDD substances have been found to be among the most frequently and most severely affected by COVID 19 pandemic. Here is a bar graph of the community services for filaria and human peace by areas in several years. As you can see, the year, year past, the problem has, has been neglected in a large number. COVID-19 affected the following entity services. The disruptions of community-based interventions like mass treatment, related chemotherapy, uh, vector control in, are the most frequently and most severely affected of all entity services. Delays in diagnosis, treatment and care and other health facilities based services. 
uh, discontinuation of monitoring and evaluational activities, including the routine surveillance and population based surveys, are greatly affected by COVID 19. Delays in manufacturing, shipment, transport, and delivery of NGD medicines and consumables to endemic countries and in their disruption uh, within countries. Diversion of financial resources and reassignment of neglected tropical diseases personal to support the COVID-19 response. And absence from work of NGD personnel due to illness, caregiving responsibilities, and government mandated movement restrictions. Uh, below in this slide, it is a bar graph representing male and female affected. The main disruption suffered due to COVID-19. Many entities, uh, activities are postponed due to the pandemic. Specifically, the mathematical remodeling on several entities like lymphatic filariasis that is the impact of COVID-19 as a uh, disruption will carry across the disease. In the picture that we can see, the percentage of countries that have reported the disruption in entity services, the light yellow is marked for 5% to 20% to 25% disruption. The often yellow is marked for 26 to 50 percent disruption and the rate is marked for more than 50 percent disruption and below in this picture uh, there is a major recovery funding uh, of NPDs in COVID-19 situation. Uh, this is a bar graph. The NPD are endemic in some countries. Uh, their economical growth and master taxes to share in the
my deepest gratitude to our principal sir dr shomor chattopadhyay and iqsc coordinator dr obhijit de for their encouragement and cooperation in all our endeavors and i must acknowledge the technical assistance provided by mr chupriyo dash throughout the program and from the first day of uh, our planning and thank you all my students colleagues and all the participants for your continued support patient hearing and active participation so ending for today good night good night good night all good night everyone good night ma'am thank you good night ma'am good night and especially thanks to shomadipto for organizing uh, such a wonderful session today's session thank you ma'am the idea was excellent thank you shikantana welcome thank you all let's end the session